Psalms 37, verse number 1 says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they so shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the lands, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the good singing. God, we're thankful the cross is still powerful. And Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that even our darkest trials could be blessings in disguise. We're thankful you're on the throne, and we're thankful for this privilege to once again be able to look into the perfect law of liberty, the precious word of God, and draw strength for our souls. Uh, Father, we pray you'd bless the reading of it, and we pray that you would certainly anoint the preaching of it, that uh, these few here in attendance and those that are watching live stream would receive exactly what they need uh, from Almighty God. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd bring these uh, 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 halting times to an end soon, that uh, our state will open up, and more importantly, our churches would open up, We'd be able to worship you collectively as the body of Christ as you intended. Lord, we do pray for those that are sick. You'd touch them and help them. We pray for those that, Lord, uh, are struggling, that are frustrated, that are fi filled with uh, anxiety, that, God, you'd be with them and calm them and give them a peace that passes all understanding. Uh, Father, we do pray for any that might be tuning in that are lost without God. That God, something would be said that would pierce their heart. Through cords of love, you'd draw them to repentance. Uh, and we'd see them trust in Christ. Uh, Lord, we do pray for Miss May, whose birthday's tomorrow. You'd give her a great day. We appreciate that, dear saint of God. We appreciate all of our members. And God, I pray you'd bless them accordingly. Uh, now, Father, help us. Help us from the Word of God. Uh, get glory to your wonderful name. Well, thank you for it. For it is in that wonderful name, the name of the Lord Jesus, we do ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, Amen. I want to look at just a couple things uh, as a way of introduction. I want you to notice that the psalmist deals here in these verses with our doubting. Uh, he says in verse number one, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Uh, and can I say in this day and age, uh, with all that is going on, if you're not careful, uh, you'll catch, catch yourself doubting the things of God. Uh, uh, you'll catch yourself saying, God, we've asked you to open up our churches, and God, we've asked you to send revival, and God, we've asked you to do great things for us. Uh, 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 but it seems like uh, the heavens are shut up. It seems like no answer comes. Uh, doesn't seem like things are getting better, but just continuing to delay. Uh, but I remind you, my dear friends, that God is always right on time uh, and God uh, is in control uh, and God uh, for such a time as this has allowed this to occur uh, 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 we understand the mechanics behind it but God has allowed it uh, and we also understand uh, that God in his timing will move accordingly uh, but we'll, we'll doubt God God we prayed uh, but yet we've read the Bible time and time again, but we haven't consumed the Bible. And I say those Jews were in the wilderness 40 years before God answered. Now I pray we're not in this uh, environment for 40 years. Uh, but see, our timetable and God's timetable is always different. We want everything instantaneously. But God's doing a work in the shadows. And when everything's right, then God will reveal he said, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass uh, and wither as the green herb. Uh, he deals with our doubting. It seems like uh, when we're in the valley or when things aren't going our way, we uh, uh, tend to uh, uh, run from the faith that God has instilled in his word and has tried to instill in our heart. We begin to run with emotion and begin to doubt God. Uh, I like that song you hear some of them uh, choirs down south sing uh, on, a, on a regular occasion. There's no need to doubt him now. Uh, God's still in control. And so he deals with doubting. And the psalmist also deals with doing. Look what he says in verse 3. Trust in the Lord. Okay, that'll help our doubt. 
But look what he says next. And do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. It's one thing to believe God. It's another thing to do something about it. He said, trust in the Lord, but while you're trusting, do good. Do good to people. Do good by people. Just do good things. And it'll never come back to haunt you when you do right, and when you do good. And he's uh, 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 reminding us that in, uh, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of the climate, regardless of what's going on, we are to do good. We're to be Christ-like. It's not always easy, but we're to be Christ-like. He deals with doubting. He deals with doing. But then he deals with delighting. Look at verse 4. He says, Delight thyself also in the Lord. Now he tells us in verse 3 to trust in the Lord. In verse 4 he says, Delight thyself also in the Lord. Our delighting ought to be in the Lord. We ought to not find joy. We ought to not find a, a, a rejoicing in things that uh, are of this world and leave out the Lord. Our delight ought to be in Him and everything else ought to just be a benefit because of Him. And too many people are not delighting in the Lord. You know what? You look around, you're going to get discouraged. You're going to get depressed. You listen to some of these uh, 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 news media outlets and you, you get consumed with all that. You're going to be absolutely frustrated to no end. Well, in lieu of all that, why don't you just get in the Bible? Why don't you just start listening to God? And why don't you learn to delight yourself in Him? And then everything else will be okay. Seek ye first came God His righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. But too many times we are so consumed with everything but God, and that's why our lives become spiritual roller coasters. He said not to fret. He said... Trust in the Lord. He said, do good. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And then he closes out verse 4 with what you hear misquoted all the time. The verse ends by this saying this, And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a million times since I've been saved, the Lord give you the desires of your heart. That's not what that verse says. That verse says that if we'll delight thyself also in the Lord, he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. First, you've got to trust in Him. Then you've got to do good. Then you've got to delight also in the Lord. You do those things, then God will give you the desires of your heart. And I got to thinking about that. The desires that many of so-called God's people seek after. Can I say? Many seek for an elaborate lifestyle. Hmm? Anybody remember Robin Leach and uh, 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 the lifestyle of the rich and famous? Huh? Thad has all of them on, on DVD if you want them. You can see Thad. He has all of them. Huh? Huh? They used to go in these, these elaborate homes where they had gold-plated toilets. It's a toilet. You know? They have gold-plated toilets. They have all this stuff. And what that did is it created a, a something in people that would desire elaborate things rather than be content with what God's blessed you with. Even today, HGTV, they go in here and they, they show how in 30 minutes they can take an old barn that's about ready to fall down and turn it into a mansion. Uh, and so every young couple that looks for a house starting out, they want granite countertops, they want it heated tile floors in the bathrooms, uh, they want all these fancy fixtures, they want farm sinks, they want all this kind of stuff. And by the way, they want it on a budget for about $300 a month. They don't understand all that stuff costs. And all that stuff is uh, 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 showcased on those things because it does cost. And there, and there comes a, a lot of labor that has to go in to where you can afford those kind of things. They don't see all. They just desire elaborate things. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. But you see, when you are not truly trusting the Lord and when you're not doing good and when you're not delighting yourself in the Lord, your desires become earthly. Many people desire elaborate lifestyles. Others desire an entertaining pastime. People are so geared in this day and age to run, 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 when you have to sit down like we've had to do the last month. They don't know what to do with themselves. They want their pastimes to be consumed with things that entertain them. Why? Because they're not delighting in the Lord. Now, I know I'm old, but I grew up where 
Grandma and Grandpa would sit out on the front porch and count the cars going down the road. And Christian had on Andy Griffith today. And Andy and this boy was sitting out in front of the courthouse whittling on a stick. I told Christian, I said, that used to be entertainment right there. Get your stick and a pocket knife, man, you was set. And they'd sit out there for hours and whittle down that stick. But see, today, that, that bores us. Our minds got to be going a million miles an hour, and we got to have all the lights and all the glam and all these things to uh, uh, cause our pastimes to be so uh, flashy and wonderful that we are so exhausted when we hit our pill at night, we just collapse, and the next day we jump up and go to get, and we ex we we just keep God out of all of it. We exempt Him from everything in our life, and we wonder why our lives are turned upside down. Many of God's people. Instead of delighting in the Lord, they want that He'll give you the desires of their heart, and their desires are elaborate lifestyles, entertaining pastimes. I mean, this world's went crazy without sports because they're used to that. But then, uh, many desire an easy path. We don't want any bumps in the road of our life. We don't want any difficulties. We don't want any troubles. We don't want any valleys. I don't know how much preaching I've done and how much preaching I've heard over the years. You grow in the valleys. In the valley, he's the lily of the valley. That's where you get the closest to God. That's where it's the freshest, the most fragrant, the most fruitful fields in the world are in valleys. Everybody wants to be on the mountaintop. Everybody wants an easy path. Everybody wants to be born with a silver spoon in their mouth, and they don't want any hardship. They want an easy path. And can I say, I too would love an easy path all the time. I don't want any trials. I don't want any troubles. But that's just not life. I don't care who you are. You're not exempt from problems. You're going to face some hard things, some difficult things, some unpleasant things. So many people desiring just easy paths. So with that in mind, I want to preach for just a little bit tonight on paths less taken. Some paths that are less taken. Um, because we desire that easy path, and we're consumed with an easy path, we're missing out on some glorious paths. And I say some paths that are less taken. We should learn to desire an edifying path path. If you have an edifying path, you're impacting people's lives. The Bible says in Psalms 25 verse 4, show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Verse 5, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. After we are taught by the Lord, uh, we then should be able to encourage others and edify others. That's an edifying path. Uh, uh, we should edify or encourage others uh, on how to yield to Christ. Uh, 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 my dear friends, if you, we could get our generation to learn to yield to the Spirit of God and yield to the Word of God uh, and submit themselves as living sacrifices unto God, uh, how much more could we impact this generation? Uh, how much more could we do for Christ? Uh, uh, yet uh, it seems like so many today uh, uh, they want to be saved they want to go to heaven but they don't want God to interfere with their life at all uh, we can teach people how to yield to Christ once we have done it ourselves uh, we can teach people how to yearn for Christ uh, how to be a longing in our soul uh, how to be able to uh, meet with God and walk with God uh, and talk with God and hear from God uh, but we ought to have a yearning in our soul for when he appears uh, and the world gets to see him in his glory Glory. We ought to yearn for Christ. Uh, we could teach them if we have that in our life. Uh, but we also, in an edifying path, uh, we could teach them how to yoke up with Christ. Listen, when you realize that He is much stronger than anything you face and you get in the yoke with Him, He'll not only take care of your problems, He'll, he'll take care of you too. And so many don't know that. And they're on an island and they're facing their troubles alone because they have never been taught through an edifying path, somebody building them up to realize that if they'll just yoke up with Christ, it'll be okay. Might not always be pleasant, may have to go through some bad things, 
Listen, when Jesus said, take my yoke upon you for my burden is, is light, he's still talking about yoking up, and it's, it's an illustration used with oxen. And they tell me that they would take the big, strong, uh, 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 experienced ox, and they'd take a young, smaller ox and yoke it up with the big ox, uh, and the big ox would show that younger ox how to uh, uh, go through uh, 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 tilling up a field and working that field and all those kind of things. But when that younger one would get tired, that uh, uh, experienced ox would carry him and do his load as well. Well, that's what Christ does. He takes all of our inabilities, and he just goes on and gets the job done and lets us go along for the ride and then he blesses us as a result but can I say something uh, cows or oxen in a field that's work and can I say not only is it work they go through a lot of bad stuff I, I know you all don't think I'm a country boy I was raised in fields I understand when you got cows in fields you also have other things you got to watch where you step because you're going to get in trouble uh well, a lot of times you've got to go through stuff like that in order to see the roses on the other side and the benefits on the other side. Uh, the path less taken is edifying paths. So many people are hurting in God's house. And what they need is people that edify them, build them up, encourage them, help them. And can I say, you cannot edify somebody else unless you've walked down that path yourself. And you've been built up by the Lord. A path less taken is an edifying one. I thought about another one, an exalting path. We say all the time, if God can get any glory from my life, I want Him to be glorified. But sometimes, as that song Miss Caitlin just sang, sometimes in order for Him to be glorified, you're going to have to go through a lot of heartache. But our life ought to be one that exalts the Lord regardless of whether we're on the mountaintop or in the valley, regardless of what we're facing today or tomorrow, regardless uh, uh, of what we've been through. He is worthy of our praise. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalms 18, 46, The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock, uh, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Uh, Psalms 21, 13, Be thou exalted, Lord, for in thine own strength uh, so will we sing and praise thy power. Uh, uh, Psalms 34, 3, O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Uh, Psalms 57, 5, Be thou exalted, O God, uh, above the heavens. Let thy glory uh, uh, be above all the earth. And then the 99th Psalm, verse 5, Exalt ye the Lord our God uh, and worship at his footstool for he is holy. Uh, we ought to exalt the Lord. Uh, an exalting path uh, is a wonderful path. Listen. As I think back in my life right now, some of the folks that had some of the greatest impact are some of the folks that was the happiest about the Lord and wasn't ashamed to let people know how much they loved God uh, about to have an exalting path in our life. Oh, an easy path is wonderful, but an exalting path is glorious. There are those that don't seek after these paths. You ought to seek after a path less taken, an edifying path, an exalting path. I thought about this, an engaging path. Sometimes we get so fed up with people, we don't want to be around people. We don't have to worry about social distancing. We just don't want to be around them. Because there are people that are nasty. Huh? What can I say? There are some things you need to be engaged in. We ought to be engaged in the service of God. The happiest you'll ever be is the busiest you are for God. The more you do for God, the more there is created in you a desire to do more for God. You ought to be engaged in the service of God. And it doesn't matter what God allows you to do. Just get involved. Just do something for God. Just tell uh, 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 somebody you come in contact with about how good God is. And just get involved and, get, and just do something for Him. It's an engaging thing. And there's just something about when you do something for God, there's such peace and joy comes in your heart, and you just want to do more. An engaging path. We ought to be engaged in the service of God. We ought to be engaged in sowing the seed of the Word of God. That's what He called us to do. We're to be sowers. Now, a lot of people have issues with confronting folks and dealing with folks and they're afraid of folks and all that. That's why there's so many different kinds of gospel literature and tracts. I mean, just hand them a tract and go on. But you're doing something. Sow the seed. Because mm, you'll never get a crop without some seed being sowed. Get engaged. 
do something for Christ. And then we need to be engaged in the sufferings of Christ. You really want to know and be intimate with Jesus Christ and know all about Christ and what motivates Christ? Learn about his sufferings. Paul said this in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Paul said that all of his qualities he counted as dung. He says, what I'm interested in is Christ. and I want to know him. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I want to know what motivated Christ. And he said, what, come, what may in my life that I might be more like him? We ought to be engaged in Christ's sufferings. Realize what he did for you and I, really, when he hung on the cross of Calvary. Really, when he walked among men. We ought to be engaged in the sufferings of Christ. It's not a popular path. Not one that a lot of folks sign up for. But if you uh, get on that engaging path, your life will be transformed and you will have a life that counts for Christ. Now, I thought about this. Another path that is less taken is an exemplary path. It amazes me how many people don't want an exemplary path. They just want a mediocre path. They want to just want to get by a path. They want a path that just mm, it's easy for them, but others think, boy, they're really doing something. See, people want a notoriety path. They want everybody to say, boy, look what they're doing. But an exemplary path says, not I, but Christ that liveth in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 Our life ought to demonstrate to those around us the pardon of God. They ought to see what Jesus' blood did in our life. They ought to see that all things are lawful but not all things are expedient. That I'm lawfully I can do whatever I want to but because of what Christ has done to me there are some things I just choose not to do they ought to see the pardon of God demonstrated in our lives they ought to see the peace of God demonstrated in our life Jordan brought out in Sunday school this morning what the world is really looking for and can I say one thing the world wants is peace they don't have it now again I know I'm old but I remember when people didn't have to take pills to go to sleep at night. Have you ever watched commercials? You got pills to wake you up in the morning, pills to put you to sleep at night. You got pills to make the sun shine. You got pills to make it where you don't have to walk around with a smile on your face on a stick that you can actually smile and have a happy face and all these guys. They got pills for everything because people are so zoned out and checked out. Because they can't deal with life. You know why they can't deal with life? They don't know the giver of life. But if you know Christ, you ought to demonstrate to others that there is a peace that passeth all understanding. He says, my peace I live with you. Listen, there's a lot of things I don't understand. And, and you, you know, because you know me. These last four weeks, I haven't do all this without people in the building. It is absolutely drove me to the brink of I want to hurt something hmm? uh, might come down the farm and just start shooting things all right huh I mean you know it's just driving me crazy because I was telling Miss Nett the other night one thing always about me I know y'all think I'm confrontational I'm really not but if I know I'm right and you tell me I'm wrong you're getting, a, you're getting a bloody nose. That's just what it is. If I know I'm right, I'll fight you tooth and toenail. You may knock me down 30 times. I'm getting back up because I know I'm right. And this whole thing, I know I'm right. It's not the boogeyman that's going to kill everybody. It's a manufactured fear to learn to control people. It's a test run for the Antichrist. That's what it is. And he's 
Sorry politicians, these liberals have bought into it and they're trying to drag their feet on I know what's going on. And really, there's not been 50,000 people die of COVID-19. Somebody had a runny nose, they died of a heart attack. Well, that's COVID-19. I saw one thing on Twitter where somebody had a parachute accident and they hit the ground. The parachute didn't come out, but they, they said they died of COVID-19. That's where we are. And I know I'm right on this thing and it's frustrated me to no end because the attack that's been against God's people and us not being able to assemble, telling us we're non-essential, it's absolutely drove me crazy. But you know what has got me through all this? The peace of God. I know who is in control. And I know that our labor in the Lord's not in vain. And I understand that even in these circumstances, God is doing something. If nothing else, He's whetting the appetite for God's people when we do get to come back together. But we ought to have an exemplary life that shows people not only the pardon of God in our life, but the peace of God. Hmm? And then I thought about this. Our life ought to demonstrate the plea of God. The plea of God is for men everywhere to repent. Jesus Christ came seeking to save that which was lost. It's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, and our life ought to speak to people that Jesus loves them and Jesus wants to save them. Too many Christians have a life that is condescending. They look down on sinners. I'm glad our Savior didn't. We should never look down on people. Our life ought to speak volumes to them that God saved me and God loves you just as much and God wants to save you too. They ought to see that in our lives. Our life ought to be an exemplary one. You read some of the biographies of some of the great soul winners in years gone by. They weren't eloquent people they weren't elaborate people they were people who just loved God and that love exuded from them and they just shared how good God was with folks and folks trusted in Christ then I thought about this lastly yeah an easy path that sounds great but when we get to glory people that have walked these paths are the ones that God's going to say were great the last path I thought about, what a desire, an ex expanded path, an expanded one. I was an only child. I do not apologize for that. I don't need people. I grew up without people. Now, as a kid, you could give me some matchbox cars or you could give me some plastic army men and I'd have a time. That's all I needed. And one thing, I always won, you know. It depend on which side of the army's men I set up, I always won, you know. Uh, but in being an only child, I learned to have and I developed a very vivid imagination. Uh, I mean, I, that's why I love that verse that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think because I am way out there with imagination. I can think about all kinds of things God can do. That's why I'm excited about St. Lucia. Because I, I know what God can... I, I can envision... I know God can go way beyond my vision. But see, too many times as Christians, we bury our head in the sand and we think this is enough. We ought to walk down an expanded path and just, just see, God, can you really do all this? Don't limit God in your life. Ask God to give you a greater vision and a greater desire to serve Him. I found this old poem by C.J. Rolls. I have quite a few of his books. And he said this, Lord, grant the wider range of vision, the vaster view of shoreless grace, the scope of purpose truth reveals that we may richer glories trace. Give us to grasp the spacious love that reaches to the utmost bound, the far-flung kingdom of the sun where every realm is hallowed ground. Grant us to scan the boundless love of wisdom's wide unfathomed sea that spans the ages and the years revealing what is yet to be. 
the mingled treasuries of truth, the blended beauties of thy word, the mystery of God's perfect will, the name and fame of Christ the Lord. God help us to desire to see where every land is hallowed land. God grant us the desire to see an expanded view of where many are sons brought to glory, where many get saved, where many come under the umbrella of grace, where great revival once again spans this globe. Let's not limit the unlimited God. Let's ask Him to expand our path that we can see Him go beyond the boundaries of our scope of understanding. Ask for an expanded path. Hmm? That's what Jabez did. He asked for God to enlarge his coast. Don't limit God. Ask God to open doors. And then ask him if he opens a door in your life to give you the grace to walk through it. Don't limit God. Walk that expanded path. And you'll see desires come to fruition in your life that you really never believed were possible. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You want a shallow life? Have shallow desires. You want a fulfilled life? Ask God for those fulfilling paths. Might not be easy, but oh, they're fulfilling. And oh, when you see God do things in your life and you see God use you to impact other people's life, you're sure glad you're on that path. I wouldn't trade the paths that God has allowed me to trod for what I see others go through. I'm just thankful for the good grace of God. If God allows you to go down a path to show you true desires that you have in your heart to see Him glorified, friend, whatever path it is, it is well worth it because Jesus walks with you on that path. I'd rather live a meager life and have Jesus than have an elaborate life without him. My dear friend, what paths are you desiring tonight? Don't take the easy road. Take the road less travel. The road that looks like it's full of thorns and briars. Say, Lord, lead me down that path that I might see your glory. And friend, it would be well worth that path that you go down. Thank you for your attention tonight. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Lord, we bless your holy name. Lord, we're glad that your ways are far above our ways. And God, we're glad that, Lord, you reveal the mysteries of God through paths so often not trod. God, give us, Lord, a vision and a desire of God that goes far beyond our expectations. Help us to see the great God of glory revealed in our day. Help us to see you do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Help us, Lord, to be settled for nothing less than the gloriousness of Christ revealed in the paths that we trod. Now, Father, bless these few that were here in attendance, and then, Father, those that were watching. Meet every need of every heart, and help our desires always to be about Thee. God, I certainly pray that You would help us not to fret during these days. Lord, I pray all doubt would be removed by our faith in Thee. And Father, certainly help us to trust You and to do what we know to do is right. For Him to know it to do good and doeth it not, it is sin. God, we don't want to be sinful. We want to be right with God. So help us to do what we're supposed to do. And then again, Father, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Bless now. Lord, bless throughout this week. And Father, get glory to your name. And God, we ask again that you would open this thing up soon so we can meet with thy people and hear and see what great things God has got in store for us. Bless now as only you can, and we'll praise you and bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful and lovely and holy and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.